right guys, we got a problem. Support for Proxmox on these framework motherboards just sucks. My name is Abe and I have been trying to get this Proxmox cluster set up for a couple days now. If you watched the first video, uh, hyping this project up, I've had a couple lessons learned over the last couple days and I wanted to talk about that. So I'm using these ethernet adapters, okay? I had a bench set up like this, same power cord, same ethernet adapter going into the switch, same Bluetooth keyboard and same ISO file, right? And I was just flashing one after the other and then plugging them into the rack. And then in the rack, I have more of these just to connect to give them internet. Well, silly me, it occurred to me that the MAC address is being assigned to the chip in here to the IP address, right? Not to the board. So by the time I put them in the rack, I plugged in a different one of these and then when I go to ping it or try to go to the website, I couldn't access it. So I was thinking it was a hardware issue with the framework motherboards and Proxmox software, but that was dumb. I'm being silly. It was a physical address assigning issue. But what I noticed on this board, if I plug in the internet connection into any port besides this one, I cannot get an IP address. This just doesn't work on this back port. I don't know if that's a hardware issue, a BIOS thing, a software issue, but if power goes into this left one by the grill and ethernet goes into this front left one, I can get a DHCP request successfully via this machine. So I'm going to try to install this again and see if after multiple reboots, I can still access this machine reliably. And I'm gonna let this install, and this might get on, if you're doing this yourself, this might get stuck on LVSs at 3%. Wait about 15 or 20 minutes. It is formatting the SSD, and it'll eventually work its way through. In our case, this one was super fast, but sometimes it does hang up, I've noticed. So just be mindful of that. And then I'm gonna just reboot this machine a couple times to make sure I can still get internet access over this port, and then I'm gonna try to plug it into other ports and see if once it's assigned over this port for whatever reason, it would work in other ports, or maybe it just has to always be in this port, but I will let you know. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and reboot this. It auto does it, I'll just wait, it's gonna go through its things, and then up here, we're gonna see like the red air, need to remove the boot. Okay, there's the blue screen, you could unplug it at that point as well and wait for this to boot. And then I'm going to just try to ping this real quick. And it was at 224. Start pinging and I'm getting a response already from it. Let me try to go to it in my web browser and I can get to it. And then let me just hard power cycle this just in case let's say our power cuts out at our house. I'm gonna see if I can still get to this device. And then I also want to try plugging it into a different port and seeing if I can still get a response uh, from it out of a curiosity standpoint. But for some reason, at least when installing and setting it up specifically, it wants this front right port. That's just the one that it recognizes or it just says that it couldn't get an internet connection. Okay, so that's very weird. Just after a hard power cycle, it didn't change the block didn't change the port, didn't change anything, and I cannot access the framework or Proxmox in the browser. I can't ping the device. I'm telling you, I'm stumped. I thought it was this, then I thought it was the port, and then I thought it was the cable, and then you know, whatever, and I reboot it, and it just doesn't work. It's, it blows my mind. I don't I have no idea why, but it's pretty frustrating and I'm kind of at the end of my rope with the idea of Proxmox ever working, at least on the 11th gen boards. I just don't think it's compatible. Compatible. So we're gonna try doing the same thing, uh, realizing our mistake with IP address signing with this, uh, 
with the adapters and the Mac physical Mac address assignments, but we're gonna try Ubuntu server and see if that's reliable because we know framework hardware and BIOS has good uh, Ubuntu Linux support. So let's try that, but I think Proxmox at this point is a lost cause. Okay, so I have a different USB device plugged in down here, that little silver one, and that has Ubuntu server on it. And so we're going to just try to rock this and power cycle it a whole bunch, try to plug it into different ports, and see what we can get reliability-wise. Because Proxmox is just, it's not going to happen. So I'm thinking of an Ubuntu server uh, portainer Docker Swarm with a 2.5-inch by 3 uh, Zeph cluster, so a single 480 gig enterprise Intel SSD across each node and some type of high availability cluster for our Docker Swarm and we might just get more reliability out of that than Proxmox. So I actually decided I want to try something here because I want the Ethernet to be plugged into the back of the board uh, down here where I said Proxmox wouldn't get an IP address from that. Uh, for some reason, only get it from the front. So I want to try in this order. Install from this drive, keyboard from here, power from the right one, Ethernet from the left one. Uh, click boot for this Ubuntu server and see if we can get an IP address over DHCP over that same port. Okay, and so now we're just going to attempt to install Linux. Okay, so I'm going to click done, done, and this is giving us an IP address of 206. Okay, so we'll note that in our notes. Click done, click done. This is going to check the mirror location, so we're going to see if we get internet access over that port that we couldn't get Proxmox internet access over. And there, now it passed. So I tried a couple times to reboot it, and for some reason now... It's working, so I don't know if that was a network issue or a delay issue or whatever, uh, but it is working, so I'm just going to click done, even though that took a couple tries, very weird behavior, and then we need to dis or name our stuff, make a username, make a password, and install this, and then power cycle it. Um, a couple times and just see if I can continue to get to that IP address. It's just, once again, very weird behavior that we're seeing. Okay, and so now we're going to do a reboot now. Remove. Yep, so it's saying, A, hey, remove that or we can't restart. And then press enter once it's removed. And so now I'm no longer getting a ping request on my computer, but we should hear in a second after this reboot. And I'm getting a response. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pull the power. A harsh reality that, you know, your power might turn off at your house or whatever. Your device isn't ready for it. I'm no longer getting a ping. I click here. I'm going to click turn on again. And see if we just get better stability out of running Linux server on these. And I'm getting a response again on the computer and it boots here. So it seems like we got good stability with Linux. But we're just not going to get the stability we're looking for. Or really even usability at all out of Proxmox. So interesting findings. Um, it looks like we're going to be running Portainer and a Docker Swarm cluster. Uh, for this series. So I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you have some lessons learned And if you want to try this yourself on newer versions or the AMD version of the board and tell me in the comments if you guys found uh, Similar findings with Proxmox and if it just lacks support and that's the issue here or maybe it's specifically this generation I would love to know. All right. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for episode uh, three where we set up all of these with Portainer and then a high availability cluster, probably using Zeph.